Tucker Carlson and Matt Taibbi delved deep into a chilling conversation about the possible persecution of journalists and the insidious use of prison as a political weapon. They passionately discussed the vital role of freedom of speech, the shifting dynamics of political power, and the grave dangers faced by those who dare to challenge authority. So they're using jail as a political instrument. How long until that comes to journalists? Like, do you worry that it, at this rate, like you wind up indicted? Uh, I've, I've started for the first time to worry about that. Um, you know, be, because I spent so much time in Russia and I knew people who, you know, physically suffered for what they did, right? I, whenever people talked about taking risks as a journalist in the United States, I always said, look, please, you know, like yeah. in, in other parts of the world, they actually go through hardship. Yeah, try that in Mexico. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See what happens, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's gotten weird here. I mean, even, look, even, even the Bannon story, there's an element of that where it may not be as much about him as a political figure as it is about war room, necessarily. Well, it's right? 100% that. Right? And I mean, no one wants to say it, but at this point in his life, as of today, Steve Bannon is a journalist. That's what he is. You may disagree with him completely. He hosts a talk show every day. Right. It's like, what is that? Right. And the most influential one. Yeah, I know. Right. And, you know, you hear people like Rick Wilson uh, getting up and saying, yeah, it's four months, but it's 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 four important months. It's worth four key months. He said, you know, like, um, you know, the Republican strategist, he, he said that the Lincoln Project, yeah, the Lincoln Project guy, the former Dick Cheney aide, you know, like I, I, I saw that and I was like, wow, they're kind of saying that out in the open, you know, and um, and even even my experience, look, look, you had the FISA thing happened yeah, yeah. um when i when i did the twitter files an irs agent showed up in my house while i was testifying in, uh, in to, to to congress um so that's absolutely crazy yeah no i i, I thought it had to be a coincidence but it, uh, i don't think i now no, no longer think it is and I, I do worry about it i mean I, I haven't even shared this with my wife yet but i thought it might be time for us to get another a house in some other place that doesn't have an extradition treaty yeah well there uh, aren't many you know, um, yeah, which is a problem. Oh, right? I'm aware of that. Yeah. 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 And um, I, I never had those thoughts even even a year ago, but uh, you must have had them. Um, I've had some thoughts. Yeah. I've had some experiences that, you know, are pretty shocking, I would say. Um, not interested in talking about it, but yeah, for sure. Really, really shocking. The conversation raised serious alarms about using legal and political maneuvers to target individuals based on their political views or media work. Agreeing with Tucker Carlson and Matt Taibbi's stance, one can see how this behavior dangerously undermines the core principles of justice and freedom. Freedom of speech and press protection are the very pillars of democracy. Persecuting journalists sets a perilous precedent that threatens these freedoms. The moral courage required to stand against repressive systems and uphold personal responsibility and authenticity is immense. The discussion highlighted the anxiety that grips individuals when faced with the threat of persecution for their beliefs and actions. Journalists and politicians must confront these risks truthfully and responsibly to maintain their integrity. The looming shadow of political persecution directly impacts the collective spirit of society. The fear of legal retaliation stifles the voices of journalists and political critics, breeding a climate of self censorship and constricting public discourse. This fear ultimately weakens the democratic process. The public's response to Tucker Carlson and Matt Tybee's conversation sheds light on the crumbling trust in government and media organizations. It also critiques the effectiveness of current media protection systems, emphasizing the urgent need for stronger safeguards to allow journalists to work without fear of retribution. Narratives about political persecution evoke empathy and shape perceptions of fairness and justice within the legal system. Using legal tools as political weapons carries profound implications, highlighting the broader context of governmental responsibility. The ethical challenge remains to balance law enforcement with protecting individual rights, as perceptions of unequal treatment under the law erode public trust in government agencies and democratic principles.